So you've had the COVID vaccine and shortly after, maybe a few days or a few weeks, you've had maybe a heart attack or a stroke or a blood clot or a severe allergic reaction and you're definitely convinced that this is due to the vaccine. But how do you prove it? So scientists will usually tell you they look at what they call causality association. So causality association looks at the event or the disease and they also look at the timeline and they look at the exposure to the drug or the offending agent. And usually there has to be proof beyond a doubt that whatever disease you had was down to the offending agent. Now it doesn't have to be 100% because as you know, nothing in life is 100% apart from death, but there has to be overwhelming evidence that yes, this is due to the offending agent or the drug or the vaccine as we're talking about specifically. And that's when you're looking at numbers. So the more numbers, the more it helps. So usually scientists will look at what we call epidemiological studies. This is usually done at the population level. So epidemiological studies will be looking at not just one country. So you'll be looking at different countries such as the France, the UK, Spain, Germany, as well as African and Asian countries. And it has to be what we call statistical significance, which means that this event has not occurred by chance. Also, we're looking at specificity, as in there is no other cause that would explain why you had the condition. So if you had a heart attack, for example, it shouldn't be due to the fact that you smoke or you drink alcohol. It has to be proven that could this be due to the vaccine. Another factor that's very important is what we call temporal association. So usually when you have the vaccine, it takes about roughly five days to kick in within the body. And the timeline is five to 30 days of the vaccine. So if you had a heart attack on day two of having the vaccine, they would say that it's mostly unlikely that it's due to the vaccine as opposed to maybe day five or day six. Or if you had a blood clot, maybe two to three months after having the vaccine, they would say it's unlikely that this is due to the vaccine because this is outside the timeline of the five to 30 day period. And that's why the timeline is so important when we're talking about causality association. And that's why studies are usually done at the population level as opposed to the individual level, which are harder to prove. So what I mean by this is if one person has, let's say you had a pain in the eye, you know, as a result of the vaccine, and you're the only person in 200 million people that had that side effect, it's very difficult to prove that the vaccine is due to, is what caused the problem. Unless there are more people coming up with the same side effects. This is why if you notice that at the start of the COVID vaccines, there were people reporting Bell's palsy. However, this was rather investigated than being reported as a cause because they were trying to find out was it coincidental? So for example, could you have been taking another drug at the time or could something else, whether it's smoking, have triggered a Bell's palsy? Or some people with hair loss who complain of having hair loss after the COVID vaccine. Some people taking chemotherapy, for example, which can also cause hair loss. Was it down to the chemo or was it down to the vaccine or was it an interaction of both? So that's why looking at things on a scientific basis is very important. And that's why a lot of cases are looked more at the population level than at the individual level. For example, take the death of a teenage girl in the United Kingdom following vaccination with the HPV vaccine. This was initially attributed to the vaccine, but a post-mortem found it to be due to a malignant mediastinal tumour. So basically it was found that she had cancer, which caused her death, but it was coincidental that she had the vaccination at the same time, but actually this was not due to the vaccine, but this was due to cancer. So this is what we mean by coincidence. So if, for example, you had a blood clot as a result of the vaccine, there has to be no other explanation to explain the blood clot. So usually they'll look at your risk factors, you know, are you obese? Do you smoke? Do you have a family history of blood clots? Then they might want to do some blood tests to check if you've got any blood clotting deficiency, you know, any factors that will prevent your blood from clotting properly. Or do you have background diseases such as cancer? As you know, people with cancer are prone to blood clots. Now, when we're looking at blood clots, which can happen in the brain, in the lungs, as well as the deep veins of the legs, with the COVID vaccine, the mechanism by which they work is usually associated with low platelets. It is very rare to have blood clots with normal platelets due to the COVID vaccine. And I have done a video on this previously. So if you've got blood clots and they do a blood test and it's shown low platelets, then it's more likely that it's a COVID vaccine that would have caused the event. But like I said, they would also look at other risk factors, you know, such as do you have a history of low platelets? Do you have a blood clotting deficiency that would cause low platelets, for example? Do you have risk factors? And they would have to exclude all this as causing the blood clots, which would make it more likely to be the COVID vaccine that causes the blood clots. So when something happens 
in regards to the vaccine, there has to be a mechanism. You, if 2,000 people had a condition, you cannot just say, oh, this is due to the vaccine. There has to be a scientific basis to explain what's going on. Now, if you take something more rare, such as optic neuritis, which is inflammation of the optic nerve that can cause eye pain, headaches, and reduced vision, it is more common in young people and in females. And usually there's a typical time frame of about two weeks after the COVID vaccine. But you would also need scans to exclude other factors such as MS, which is multiple sclerosis, brain tumors, a brain infection, as well as blood tests and other antibodies that can also cause optic neuritis. So at present, there is no real evidence that COVID vaccine causes optic neuritis because like I explained earlier, there is not enough numbers at a population level. So for example, there has only been 46 reports, you know, for, for, for optic neuritis. And there's so many factors, you know, some are outside the time frame, you know, some have other underlying conditions that would also trigger optic neuritis. So it's very difficult at present to prove that definitely is a COVID vaccine. So in this case, it is not dismissed. You know, the evidence is inconclusive and that's why studies are still ongoing. So even if right now they'll say there's no evidence, there could be evidence in two years and in two years time, they could say, yes, you know, we know for sure that, you know, COVID vaccines can cause optic neuritis. And this is why reporting any side effects or any adverse events are very important. Now, one question, especially if you've had the first dose of the vaccine or the second dose of the vaccine and you had a side effect, the question you always want to know is, is it likely to happen again if I have another dose of the vaccine? Especially if you're someone who's immunocompromised and you've been told that, you know, you need to have the vaccine to protect yourself from having COVID. Now, there's the argument of benefits and risks. For example, they will tell you that you know, if you had a COVID, there might be, let's say, one in 10 million chance of um, having a blood clot. But if you had a COVID vaccine, there's a one in 100 million chance of having a blood clot. So you'd be told that you're more likely to have a blood clot with COVID infection than with the COVID vaccine. But then the situation gets complicated. If you had a COVID, you never had a blood clot. And then maybe 12 weeks later or six months later, you took the COVID vaccine and then you had a blood clot. So this is where science does not always add up. There are lots of factors involved. You could just be that unlucky person, that one in 100 million that was meant to have a blood clot with the COVID vaccine, and you were not that one in 10 million that did not have the blood clot with the COVID. So even in cases of lack of evidence that the COVID vaccine would have caused that condition, some doctors would usually advise not to take the second dose until you know, further studies have taken place or further investigation is done to prove that the COVID vaccine did not cause that particular condition. So for example, as we mentioned with optic neuritis, if you still have reduced vision after six to eight weeks and your dose is during about eight to 12 weeks time, you normally advise not to have any further doses of the vaccine because in this case, the risks outweigh the benefits because what if it happens a second time, it happens in your other eye or in the same eye and you have total blindness. Now, if you're a keen researcher and you wanted to know for yourself, you know, where can I find the evidence that the COVID vaccine can cause certain conditions, such as we mentioned, like your strokes, your blood clots, your pericarditis, and other conditions, I will signpost you to the sites that you can go to. So this is specifically for the UK. I'm sure in other countries you have equivalent evidence-based research. So we use what we call the Green Book, chapter 14a, tells you all you need to know about COVID-19. Click on that. As you can see, chapter 14a, COVID-19. I'm going to go straight to page nine. So page nine talks about the safety of the vaccines. So here you can see that it tells you about local reactions, which you usually expect, such as redness, swelling, pain. And for the Pfizer vaccine, it tells you that a number of cases of myocarditis and pericarditis have been reported after the Pfizer vaccine. It tells you that it's highest in those under the age of 25, males and after the second dose. It tells you of another condition called Gillian-Barry syndrome that has been reported, but it tells you that it's a very small number of cases with Gillian-Barry syndrome. So again, we have the Moderna vaccine as well. Moderna vaccine, here you can, there's a mention of Bell's palsy. Bell's palsy was reported by three participants in the vaccine group and one participant in the placebo group. As for the Pfizer vaccine, this will be monitored closely. Um, again, it mentions about myocarditis and pericarditis. If we go to the AstraZeneca vaccine, we talked about blood clots. So here it says there's a very rare condition involving serious thromboembolic events accompanied by thrombocytopenia. Thrombocytopenia means low platelets. Thromboembolic means blood clots, which has been reported after the AstraZeneca 
vaccination. So this tells you that it affects the brain, cerebral venous sinus, the portal vein is the vein that leads to the liver, and it can present with low platelet counts and high d dial measurements. So that tells you that yes, the AstraZeneca vaccine has been known to cause blood clots. So is anything relevant down? Yeah, there's a Novavax vaccine, but I would not really talk about that. As you can see, 54 pages, so you know you've got time to go through the vaccines. If you've got time to go through the Groove Green book, there's lots of information about the COVID vaccine. But I want to go to another site, which is what we call the, um, the yellow card reporting. Now, yellow card reporting is very important because it tells you, you know, what are the possible side effects of the vaccine, even though in most cases the COVID vaccine will not have caused the adverse event, but it's very important to report because they need the numbers and they need to get the evidence. So if we go to overall safety, again, it tells you that majority of side effects cause symptoms such as flu-like illness, headaches, chills, fatigues, you name it, muscle aches. But let's be more specific. Information in pregnancy. If you're pregnant and you're worried about having the COVID vaccine, here it tells you the COVID-19 vaccines do not contain organisms that can multiply in the body, so they cannot infect an unborn baby in the womb. So there's no data to suggest that the COVID vaccines can increase the risk of miscarriage, stillbirths or birth complications or any abnormalities in the womb, which is good news. If we scroll down to breastfeeding, it tells us that there's no current evidence that COVID-19 vaccination while breastfeeding causes any harm to breastfed children or affects the ability to breastfeed. If you, then again, we have other safety areas like menstrual disorders. So it tells us here, that there is a possible association between the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccine and heavy menstrual bleeding. The events were mostly non-serious and were temporary in nature. Do you remember when a lot of women were complaining about heavy menstrual bleeding after the vaccine and it was denied? Well, here it is. So again, myocarditis and pericarditis, which I've done in an earlier video. Check out my video on pericarditis. Reports of a fatal outcome. We're talking about um, death. There has been a few links of death shortly after the vaccine. It tells us here that a higher proportion of people vaccinated early were elderly or they had pre-existing medical conditions, which makes it more difficult to, to link with death. So here the conclusion that over the course of the pandemic, 180,000 people across the UK have died within 28 days of a positive test. Vaccination is the single most effective way, blah, blah, blah. So it tells you that, yes, yeah, still go on for the vaccines. Just to quickly show you the website about the yellow card reporting. So, you know, if you had any side effects, let's put Pfizer, for example, you type in Pfizer and then you scroll down, you can select the vaccine, not medicine, but the vaccine. So select that one. Then you can click on start report. Are you a public member? Yes, I'm a member of the public. And what does your report relate to? You click on suspected side effect and it takes you to the next step. And then you put your details and then from then you can then you know, continue and mention your side effects. If you're looking for further evidence that COVID vaccine can cause blood clots, for instance, so if I type in COVID vaccine and blood clots, you can see that it gives me a literature review search. So PubMed is a website to go to if you're looking for other literature reviews. And um, it tells you, how could a COVID vaccine cause blood clots? Scientists, scientists race to investigate. So you can see that if you're scientific minded, there are lots of articles you can read here on COVID vaccines and blood clots. I won't go into detail. And in another example, let's type in COVID vaccine and stroke. So COVID vaccine and stroke, again. There's some studies there on myocardial infarction, there's stroke there. There's cardiac complications. Let's look at COVID vaccines and heart attack. So COVID vaccines and heart attack. Again, myocardial infarction is the same thing as a heart attack. So you can see that there's some studies done. Cardiac means heart complications. So there's some evidence of COVID vaccines and cardiac complications such as heart attack. So I hope you found this video useful, you know, when talking about, you know, did the COVID vaccine cause my side effects or did it cause my condition? Because there are some conditions that are quite disabling and some conditions can be for life or some conditions can be temporary or short-lived, but they affect your day-to-day -day function, okay? So we try not to 
So we try not to speculate because as we said, there has to be evidence. And these are the sites that you can go to to look for evidence regarding your condition. And so if you remember what I said, there has to be an association in terms of there has to be a timeline within five to 30 days of the vaccine. Um, there has to be specificity that is no risk factors, no other online health condition. And it has to be statistical significance and epidemiological numbers in terms of more people in the population have had this condition and it's not down to a mere coincidence. You're not having any other drug or any other medicine that you were taking at the same time or any other underlying condition that would have also triggered this event. So I hope you found this useful. Please share this video to anyone who has questions regarding the COVID vaccines and feel free to drop comments below.